A few lectures ago, we talked about perfect competition in pharmaceutical drugs. If you invent a new drug, you get a monopoly for about 17 years. But after that, your patent expires and the competition starts. In theory, as we discussed this lecture, prices will drop. Why? Because if you're making a profit, other companies will enter your market and sell the same drug. As the supply expands, the quantity sold increases and the prices drop. The price gets closer and closer to the average cost until eventually profits go to zero and no new firms enter. In practice, that's how it normally works, but not always. This is illustrated vividly by the case of EpiPens. If you're allergic to something like peanuts and you get exposed to that allergen, you can go into what's called anaphylactic shock. For severe allergies, this can be life-threatening. Fortunately, there's an excellent solution. If you rapidly get a dose of a drug called epinephrine, it will counteract the allergic reaction. So devices that can rapidly deliver such doses as quickly as possible can be life-saving for those with serious allergies. And what is nice for those of us with allergies is that epinephrine is a generic drug. Recall from an earlier application that this means that there's no patent protection and many companies can produce this product identically. Moreover, epinephrine is cheap. A typical dose that would counteract an allergy costs about a dollar. So in this situation, you think there'd be many low-cost options available to deliver this life-saving medication to those with allergies, but you'd be wrong. Currently in the U.S. is only one option, the EpiPen, which is manufactured by a company called Mylan. The EpiPen has a very effective delivery device for epinephrine in case of an allergic reaction, an easily deployed injection which gets the drug to exactly where it needs to be very quickly. And EpiPens are popular. About four million get sold each year. This isn't surprising. We probably all know someone with serious allergies. But what is surprising is the price. EpiPens currently sell for about $600 each. Almost all of this is profit, given the cheap price of the underlying drug. So how can that be? How can a generic drug that can be produced cheaply cost so much to deliver in a competitive market? It turns out that we made two assumptions in our model of perfect competition and long-run supply that break down in this example no barriers to entry, and identical products. First, we said new firms will enter and drive prices down if there are no barriers to entry. But that's not the case with EpiPens. Medicine is highly regulated in the United States. To start selling a drug or medical device, you need to pass very stringent safety tests from the Food and Drug Administration. Over the past eight years, three companies have tried to sell a competitor to the EpiPen, but have been rejected by the FDA as not safe enough despite the fact that these products often have been deemed safe in other nations. So government restrictions can often be a barrier to entry, and that can block the pressures of perfect competition. Another assumption behind our model of long-run supply is that companies can enter a market and make an identical product. In this case, the new companies have had an easy time copying the medicine and EpiPen, but they've had trouble copying the medicine delivery part of the EpiPen. Since they can't replicate the ease and convenience of the EpiPen, they can't drive Mylan's profits down. The end result is that our typical models of competition don't work so well, and this means that prices stay high. The good news is this shouldn't last forever. Eventually, new companies will figure out how to copy the EpiPen successfully and get through the FDA screening process. But the fact this isn't happening right away shows that sometimes our well-designed models don't perfectly fit the real world.